Good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Now, obviously, China continues to be very much in the news and uh, it's, a, it's a brand new day, so a brand new problem for the, uh, for the global markets. So China has decided that the best way to deal with their problems now is one is to remove the circuit breaker. So that's now been deactivated uh, because it was kind of exacerbating the problem, the very problem that it was there to prevent. So Chinese government have gotten rid of that for now. So uh, it's on a pause. Also, they have set their mid price for the yuan to be slightly higher than it was yesterday. So that's caused a, a little bit of a, of a relief rally, especially in some of the commodity markets. But there's still a lot of questions lingering about China. And we actually have a fair amount of major macro data events to come out in the region over the next few weeks. So a lot of traders are going to be looking at that for signs of a slowdown. And uh, other traders are looking at kind of really looking for clues as to what China are going to do next. Because they had a very clear strategy at the start of the week, which was the circuit breaker to protect against any um, kind of turmoil in the equity markets. And also they had the yuan depreciation to make themselves more competitive for their exports. But then they realized that's got a very knock-on effect on the other countries, that they're not just going to sit there and not react to the uh, devaluation of the yuan. So they can keep dropping the yuan, but then all the other emerging market uh, economies are going to just drop their, uh, their FX as well. And we've seen uh, comments coming out of Europe, comments coming out of uh, India, that China really needs to come up with a proper strategy. And what we're seeing right now is, that, is they're being very reactive, but they are flip-flopping from one strategy to uh, a different strategy, to turning something on, to turning something off. And the reality is that China has a major problem to deal with. And one thing that they're showing right now is that their strategies are pretty much ineffective and that they are, are, are very reactive to even the, the smallest amount of changes. Now, when I say smallest amount of changes, we did see a 10% drop on crude and we did see two days of 7% drops on the equity markets. But they need to have a clear direction. Otherwise, people aren't going to have confidence in that marketplace. And there are a few things now to watch out for. One, capital controls being introduced into China. And second of all, they still have this big restriction on major shareholders not able to sell more than 1% of their stake in a company in a three-month period. Now, if you're a big investor, that is just not, not enough flexibility. It's just not, not on. And there isn't kind of trust that the Chinese government are going to protect the investors. It's all about trying to protect the government. And uh, that will put a lot of uh, major investors, um, put a lot of questions in their head about what their long-term strategy is in the country when there's so much financial instability. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. So when we go ahead and have a look at most of the daily charts for today, what you're really going to see is a, a kind of a, a kind of a, a relief rally. Some people will ask, is it a dead cat bounce? Are they just pausing things for now? But you'll get a chance to see things from a technical analysis perspective. So let's go ahead and have a look at the US 30 to start. So the US 30, as you can see, we had a very negative day yesterday. The Dow down almost 400 points. And we have had this, uh, this bounce this morning, which has come up to 16,684. Uh, but as you can see, this is a potential broken support now acting as resistance. As you can just see from the daily chart, from the um, support level here, the daily candle has gone up, peaked its head just above there, only to get pushed back down again. Now, CMC Marcus clients are 63% short at the moment. This is up 6% from 10 p.m. last night, UK time. And uh, they're obviously hoping that this resistance level is going to hold. The other technicals are relatively neutral, though you do have a buying signal on the RSI. It's just ticking up through that 30% level at the moment. So this is where the US market sits. So let's look at the UK 100, which has 64% sellers again, but a beautiful bounce of potential support at 58.79. Uh, you can see it's bounced off there. This is the fifth time it's managed to successfully bounce, not close below that level. We're in the middle of two ranges right now with a 60, 52. And don't forget, today is non-farm payrolls. That's at 1.30 UK time of which there will be a, a live webinar, I have no doubt, uh, by CMC Markets in London. And um, we, we're in the middle of two ranges right now, so this could really go either way. I would expect the markets are probably just going to slowly stabilize as we get closer to the non-farm payrolls figure because um, you know people don't, don't want uncertainty. They want to know what that figure is. And remember that ADP private payrolls came out slightly better than expected, so the market is hoping for a decent figure. The question is, are they going to go ahead and get it? 
So moving on to Japan, two to five, which has 60% net sellers. It's a lot less, uh, a lot less confident. We had a strong bounce this morning, but it's been pushed all the way back down, uh, almost to its opening point. Pretty much bang on this potential support level, around about 17,730. Uh, or 17,700 and it, that's an ugly candle though it's still got a lot of trading uh, left in its session today uh, that would be sending a bit of a, a worrying signal of how it's trading in Japan 225 right now because it was so much higher why is it being pushed all that way back down so then moving on to dollar yen uh, dollar yen uh, was smashed through 118 yesterday, uh, but has pushed right back up higher. It's not been as aggressive as that move that we saw on the Japan 225, uh, but as you can see, it has been a lot higher, has been pushed back down. What I think will be an interesting move is if it trades below 118, um, that would be a, a dangerous signal for the uh, for the uh, uh, kind of the short sellers uh, for the book for the, for the longs on dollar yen. Sorry. Um, because you have to remember with uncertainty, people are buying the Japanese yen at the expense of the US dollar. The yen seems to be the safe haven of choice over and above the yellow metal, which has had a good couple of sessions. And we'll get a chance to look at that in a second. Uh, but if you're long on uh, dollar yen at the moment, I can see that CMC clients are 52% long. So there's a lot of indecision right there. If it trades below 118, um, that would send a little bit of a, a worrying signal. What is quite kind of interesting is the RSI is quite close to crossing that 30% level, though it's not done it yet. Uh, and the slow stochastic is obviously massively oversold, but it hasn't had that figure, that move back beyond uh, 20 uh, to signal a potential reversal. So if we stay above 118 and change today by the end of the session, then that could be quite an interesting setup for uh, next week. So moving on to West Texas crude, it did manage to bounce off the session lows. You can just see the, uh, it's, it's kind of a hammer formation maybe. Um, now we've been higher this morning, it's been it's below the session lows. 34 spot 26 is a potential resistance. For as long as it stays below here, uh, 20, uh, close to $27 is the next potential support. You can start using the tip of this candle here as another short-term potential support as well. Normally, from a technical analysis perspective, this would be quite a bullish uh, technical signal, but the fundamentals haven't really changed that much. Uh, the fact that China have fixed the yuan slightly higher today than what they had yesterday, it does signal that, is, that the yuan's not in free fall, but we still don't know what longer term strategy is from China and uh, that is a necessity if you're trading commodities right now. So moving on to gold, gold as I said gold's had a fantastic run up up until now. I, when we're talking about dollar yen actually gold, to be fair to gold it has had a decent, a decent run up until now. Uh, we broke above 1,104, a psychological level of 1,100 which is strong. Uh, a reversal this morning. Interestingly, it was actually higher this morning. It wasn't positive territory. CMC clients are 54% uh, short at the moment, so close to 50-50. So there's a lot of indecision about that next move, but certainly it's trading below uh, potential uh, resistance right now. It's just pretty much on 1,100 as we are recording this video, um, but it'd be interesting to see how that pans out. Obviously, non-farm payrolls comes out strong. Gold's gonna feel the pain. Uh, I think people are already revising uh, US interest rate uh, hikes to be later on in the year. I think, I think we have an 8% chance of a Jan uh, rate hike, uh, but people are mainly looking towards uh, March, April, May, etc. now. For that uh, to, to happen. So we finish up with Euro dollar and GBP USD. Uh, Euro dollar and oh, having such a fantastic day yesterday, very, very strong candle. And interestingly, it stopped potentially on this sloping uh, trend line that we had drawn on here. And it's kind of reversed course a little bit this morning, sandwiched in between two moving averages. The other technicals are relatively neutral. CMC clients are 50%, 56% short. So they're obviously hoping that that trend line um, stays in, in play and certainly you could be looking at one spot 0820 as an next potential support level but we have to get through that 55 period SMA as well and if we finish up with GBP USD a hammer formation on the candle yesterday the cable was getting hammered yesterday uh, now it's, it was able to move higher but then we've got this doji formation this morning so we can't even manage a bit of positive candle movement to uh, to break the cycle of sell-off you can just see it's just been slowly edging lower and lower and lower and lower against the US dollar for some time so it still looks like quite an aggressive move but nevertheless one spot 45 56 could still be the potential support level 74 percent of clients of CMC Marcus clients buy their position value are currently short on cable 
Let's see if they are right later on in the session. So let me just quickly pull up the economic calendar uh, for today as well. Uh, make sure you don't forget about non-farm payrolls. That's at 1.30 UK time and the unemployment rates. So they're expecting 200,000 jobs. Anything above 250,000 would be seen as quite positive. And don't forget to keep an eye on that unemployment rate as well. Well, guys, thank you very much for, uh, for joining me today. Uh, very good luck with your, uh, with your trading today. And join me again on Monday uh, to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.